Dear friends, welcome to yet another installment of Orbital Geek. In this video, we're going to explore the incredible cosmic coincidence that allowed the existence of life in the universe. We're going to discover how the density of dark energy, which should have been much higher, ended up being incredibly low, allowing the formation of atoms, stars, and galaxies. We'll examine scientists' theories to explain this improbable synchronicity and consider the possibility that the universe was intentionally designed to sustain life. But was it really a coincidence? Or is there something deeper behind this surprising synchronicity? Watch until the end to learn about the most intriguing theories and decide for yourself if you believe the universe was finely tuned for our existence. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so now and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything new. Was our universe designed to be hospitable to life? There is more dark energy in the universe than the energy of all atoms and particles of ordinary matter combined. However, everything we know about particles, fields, and quantum mechanics seems to suggest that that large amount of dark energy could have been, and statistically should have been, much, much higher. Decades before astronomers had any observational evidence of dark energy, physicists were stunned to see that the most advanced theories of the 20th century predicted a level of dark energy so high that stars and galaxies could never have existed, let alone life and humanity. So how did our universe avoid that fate? And how are we alive today to ask these questions? Join me today as we continue learning about the effects of dark energy on the cosmos and explore the mathematics that suggest we really shouldn't exist. One of the first things you can learn in a physics class is that gravity is an attractive force between two objects whose strength is proportional to their masses. Gravity keeps planets in orbit around the Sun, holds stars together in the Milky Way, and even draws galaxies together to form clusters and superclusters of galaxies. But if we look farther out, that gravitational attraction starts acting in reverse, causing clusters of galaxies to recede from each other instead of attracting. So what's going on here? And, um, Einstein's theory of general relativity offers a perspective to understand this peculiar behavior. According to this theory, Space is not simply a fixed stage where objects move. Space itself can stretch, warp, and evolve over time. Einstein showed that, in this framework, gravity is not a traditional force, but rather a distortion of an object's natural path in a dynamic space-time. For example, when a planet orbits the Sun, in Einstein's view, it's simply following a straight path in curved space. Similarly, the repulsive force between clusters of galaxies can be understood as an accelerated expansion of space between them. But what could cause that accelerated expansion of space on such large scales in the universe? To begin to answer this question, we need to understand what makes space-time stretch and warp. In Newton's theory of gravity, every object with mass exerts a gravitational pull. In general relativity, every object with mass curves the space-time around it. Furthermore, Einstein showed that any form of energy or pressure also influences the dynamics of space-time. Energy density refers to how much energy is present in a given volume, how much vibration, heat, spark, and motion exists in a specific space. And in our universe, it has always been found to be positive. Pressure is the amount of force per area that the contents of that space exert by pushing on the rest of the universe around it. Imagine interstellar dust pushing outward as pockets of it collide in the vacuum. For objects so far apart, this pressure value is slightly greater than zero on a cosmic scale. When these values are cumulatively positive, as in the following formula, acceleration is proportional to the negative of the sum of density plus three times the pressure. Their influence causes the space around them to contract, essentially creating gravity that decelerates the expansion of space. However, if hypothetically the values in that equation worked out so that the pressure was negative and larger than the positive energy density, that minus sign would make everything flip, accelerating the expansion of space. This would result in a volume of space filled with a kind of anti-gravity known as dark energy. Though it's difficult to visualize something with truly negative pressure. After all, how can there be less than zero atoms in a patch of space? Atoms aren't the only things that exert pressure. Pressure is simply a force applied over an area. Fields can also exert forces. Think of a magnetic field pulling a piece of iron towards a magnet, or two magnets repelling. 
If dark energy were some kind of field that pushes everything, not just other magnets, this would correspond to what we observe in the universe. The vacuum itself containing dark energy, enough to expand the universe slowly but surely. Scientists have thought a lot about dark energy over the years, and have determined what its combined energy density and pressure value would need to be to create the rate of spatial expansion we observe. This value is about 10 to the negative 9th power in international system units, an extremely tiny number, which explains why we normally don't notice it here on Earth, only becoming perceptible on the cosmological scale of the universe. This is good news, because if the value were significantly different, our existence would be at risk. Let me break this down with a recap of the history of the universe. Here's the entire history of the universe, from shortly after the Big Bang up to the present day. This is the density of dark energy as measured by astronomers. Scientists believe its negative pressure kept this density roughly constant for trillions of years. This is the density of ordinary matter in the universe, which has little or no pressure. The matter density decreases over time, because the expansion of space dilutes the matter present. Finally, this is the density of radiation in the universe, including photons and other extremely lightweight particles. The positive pressure of radiation causes it to dilute even faster than ordinary matter. In the very early times, for a very brief period, there were no atoms. Very quickly, however, protons and neutrons fused together to create the first atomic nuclei in the primordial universe. Shortly after that, matter became the dominant form of energy, outweighing radiation. The universe cooled enough for nuclei to attract and hold on to electrons, forming the first atoms of hydrogen and helium. These atoms became the building blocks of the first stars, which were in turn drawn together by gravity to form the first galaxies and clusters. Only later did dark energy come to dominate, triggering the accelerated expansion of space and preventing the formation of larger structures. But what if the density of dark energy had been higher? Imagine if the driving force of dark energy had been stronger. It could have been enough to prevent the first galaxies from forming at all, pushing stars away from each other with more force than their own gravity could pull them together. A bit stronger than that, and it would have been much more difficult for any stars to form. And if the density of dark energy had been high enough, we likely wouldn't have had atoms or even nuclei produced in the universe at all. So that's what could have happened, but what should have happened? Using advanced mathematics and the principles of quantum field theory, scientists attempted to predict what the energy density of dark energy should be. The result was much, much higher than what we observe in nature. How much higher? The prediction was an astonishing 10 to the 45th power joules per cubic meter. Where does that value fit on the graph? It's literally off the scales. If this prediction had been correct, the universe today would have no structure, resources, or life. It would be a vast void filled only with dark energy. And if the density of dark energy had been negative by that 10 to the 45th power joules per cubic meter instead, the fate of the universe would have been no more promising, as it would have collapsed rapidly in a big crunch, mere fractions of a second after its inception. Scientists tried to explain why their prediction was so far off from reality, hypothesizing the existence of particles with positive energy and negative pressure, not yet discovered, that could balance out the mathematics and bring the density of dark energy close to zero. Or perhaps there is a large source of negative potential energy that offsets the math, like a cosmic spring pulling all that runaway energy in check. Or else, quantum field theory itself could be fundamentally flawed. However, since there is so much evidence supporting quantum field theory, it seems unwise to discard it entirely. Instead, we're left pondering the marvelous nature of this cosmic coincidence. What were the odds that the energy density of dark energy would be so low when it should have been so much higher? That this grand universal balance occurred and in such a way that we weren't shredded or crushed into a singularity? If the magnitude hadn't been so low, we wouldn't exist. Our very atoms would never have formed, torn asunder by the overwhelming expansion of space. According to our predictions, we got incredibly lucky. This coincidence occurred in such a way that the universe was able to produce life. So, was it really a coincidence? The answer to this question leads us from the realm of concrete knowledge into the terrain of theories, 
addressing the concept of the multiverse and humanity's quest to understand whether our existence is the product of chance or design. The cosmic coincidence that allowed for the existence of life is undoubtedly one of the greatest mysteries of science. The odds against such a perfectly tuned scenario for the formation of atoms, stars and intelligent life are truly astronomical. How could it be mere coincidence that the density of dark energy deviated so vastly from the predictions of quantum physics, landing exactly on the value required for a habitable universe? The odds against this happy coincidence are so overwhelming that they defy any purely mathematical or chance-based explanation. Surely there is more to this issue than science alone can explain. Perhaps physicists are overlooking a fundamental piece of the puzzle. After all, the transcendent harmony and complexity of the cosmos hints at the work of a supreme mind, something far beyond the blind chance of natural laws. As science continues its search for answers, one conclusion stands out. Our existence may be a miracle, a gift from a higher power. What do you think? Is this cosmic coincidence really evidence of intelligent design behind the universe? Leave your thoughts in the comments below 